You think so? Um, that, that right there, what is uh, Good afternoon. Welcome to Match Day. My name is Vince. This is, uh, what number is this for us, Ian? 40- I think it's 46. Six? This is our 46th episode. Um, so Ian Barker is right there in the middle. and But with us today is, and taking time away from her busy day, away from her students, <laughs> a teacher, is Corey Oglesby. And if that last name sounds familiar, it's because we had her other half on a few weeks ago. They're both high school coaches, but today we're going to focus on Corey and her her journey and, and her, you know, she's now the high school teams and she's also in Texas. And um, yeah, welcome and thank you. And we'll also talk about the DA and uh, the changes that, right, that that uh, is coming. Well, actually, sorry, has happened. And now what's the impact? So we'll talk about that too. So welcome. Thank you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to. Hope everyone is staying well and safe out there with their social distancing. It's, you know, it's kind of an exciting time. Looking forward to talking about high school soccer during this time and what the future holds. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. And then uh, we were, before we got on the air, I guess officially the Texas high school season's done. Yes. Right. So we were sharing that, you know, uh, boy, what an awful time for seniors. You know, not just in soccer, what you know, high school soccer, but just in general, right? This spring, it's awful time. Um, so how are you going to wrap up? How are you going to wrap up the season? I mean, how are you going to end now? Really, you know, that's kind of what we were just talking about. Is right now, um, as I was telling you guys, teachers, we're still not even allowed in our classrooms. They blocked our um, entrance with our keypad uh, to even get in. So right now, we're discussing on how we're going to pick up equipment. We're going to talk about. Um, how students need to get things out of their lockers, uh, how even teachers can get things out of their classrooms. Um, yeah. Also trying to figure out, um, right now we're moving forward, we're this week, uh, tomorrow we're gonna do a Zoom meeting on voting for all district, which I think okay. a lot of districts have already done. Um, that still needs to happen. Um, By the way, that might be the best way to do it because I hated going to those things. <laughs> I did, I, I'm thinking, you know, you can do it now from home. How great is that? Well, the good thing is whoever wins district at our district, they provide all the food. So you get the free dinner and the food and the there drinks go. to go with it. <laughs> yeah. All right, very good. Sorry I interrupted you. No, you're good. Um, but we had a Zoom meeting on Wednesday with our players. And the first thing they're asking, especially our seniors in my school in particular, we had 14 seniors. And they were just a great group and very talented. And we were second in the district at the time. And um, we saw two district games to play. But who knows when so we were going to playoffs, and who knows what happens whenever playoffs hit. But they're asking about banquet, and that's a really tough decision and cut tough conversation because we don't know what we're doing yet here in the state of Texas and what's allowed and when everything is going to reopen. It's just a lot of hard conversations um, moving forward. There were definitely some tears shed during the Zoom meeting just because of how sad it is um, and unfortunate. And as, as I was telling you, of my 14 seniors, seven are going to go play college soccer. But what about those seven that they yeah. didn't get the senior night? They don't get their last game. They didn't know the Friday night before spring break that was going to be the last time they'd ever step on the field. Oh, awful. Um, so you're a teacher as well. What do you teach? I teach world geography. So freshmen. Yes. Um, it's a little bit trying, but I love my freshmen. Um, but yeah, so teach on level world geography. And it's great. Uh adjusting to all the Zoom meetings and what is e-learning is. I will say my district did an incredible job at e-learning and getting that platform up and running. Uh, we've had a lot of success with it, but yeah, it's definitely been a new experience. A lot of my kids, um, we still struggle with my school. I think some of the complications with uh, e-learning is still some of our kids may not have that one-to-one -one technology or that access, maybe they do, but maybe they live in a more of a rural area and they don't have the Wi-Fi or the internet connection to where they're able to do the work. Um, so I think there's still some struggles a little bit for these next three or four weeks before we can actually get through the end of the year. Yeah, no, it's, um, uh, looks like um, Kevin mentioned the expression of emotions about the ability to, com to complete the final high school season says it all. I mean, it just, you know, just like you mentioned, you know, the girls crying and, you know, just, I, I shared with Rusty, you know, on our last one, I think that we did, you know, I coached high school and club and college a little bit. And I, I rarely saw a kid cry and weep after a, after a club game. 
that after a high school game, you see them just absolutely just break down in tears and 18 year old boys, you know, 17 year old boys and 17 year old girls just weep because it means so much to them. So, uh, you know, I love that your high school coach and your husband is a high school coach and you carry him along. It's great. But, uh, uh, no, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I mean, and I was a high school teacher for many years. So um, thank you for what you're doing. But so an announcement came last week uh, that the U.S. Soccer DA is dissolving. And so now it's like, OK, now what? Right. So now you have an opportunity. So now you got to figure out how to maybe if there is a kid that played in the D. Did you have any kids in your school that played in the DA? And um, not play? Yeah, we do have. Um, see, a lot of our kids that are playing in the DA right now or played last year, they couldn't play high school soccer, but they were still playing high school basketball or they were running track. So they were still part of the high school programs, which as a high school coach and even them, like the students would be like, coach, I don't understand why I'm allowed to play basketball and run track, but I can't play soccer, which is what my passion is. Yeah. So we still had some kids that were still participating in high school sports. They just couldn't do soccer. Um, so now this is going to open up some conversations, um, obviously about potentially about them coming back. So, yeah, I think um, as I stated to you earlier before, I think the, I think high school coaches, I think we're really excited about this opportunity and hopefully and hopeful that some of these kids come back to play in high school. Um, we also need to be realistic that some of these kids might not. Um, right. as, I, as I mentioned before, I really never had anything against the DA. Um, I think that every child, there's a certain pathway for every child. And those top one, two percent that wanted to go the DA path, I think it was perfect for them. High school may not have been for them and it still may not be. Um, but for the 85, 90 percent of kids that we coach, I think high school is another great avenue. And I think the only thing problem that high school coaches had with the DA was the ability to choose. It took away the choice of the kids. Yeah. So now if the kids decide not to come back. It's pretty much their choice to do. But at least they have that opportunity to decide. And so I think now us as coaches, it's we're hopeful that maybe some of them will come back. Um, yeah, so what, what do you think the driving uh, force will be to get them to come back? You know, I mean, because you might have some kids whose parents are like, no, 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 don't waste your time. And then right. or club coaches, unfortunately, you know, and I don't want to say, you know, club coaches are bad or whatever. I'm just saying some club coaches like don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I know and most people on this hopefully webinar know is that high school soccer is a very viable experience, not just on the field, but off the field. And. Not the club isn't, mm -hmm. but so how, how are you going to approach a young lady that wants to come and play for you and she's still kind of wavering? Well, I think the biggest thing is um, if she comes and approaches to us, that means obviously she's interested in it, right? We're not going and hunting those players down. If they right. want to play, then they're going to come talk to us about it. I think one of the most important things that you do when you have a child like that um, that's interested I think it's important to have, a, I think communication and relationship building is probably the biggest thing that we do as high school coaches. And I think um, the girls DA has been around for three years. So in a lot of situations, the girls that are coming back might be seniors and they've never played high school soccer. And like them to the boys where it's been around for nine years where they may have come and go back and forth. Um, but the girls DA is still, it was so relatively new that we may have some girls that have never um, played. So I think you need to open up that line of communication. I think as far as bringing the parents in, um, bringing the girl in and give them the opportunity to really ask questions to see what your program is about. Like, what is your philosophy? What is your um, thoughts? Um, how do you handle this situation? And they might ask you, where do you see my daughter playing and or my son even for that point. But I think communication, you bring them in and you basically develop this rapport of, hey, this is what I see doing in my program. This is where I see your daughter. Um, these are my expectations. Um, what do you, what questions do you have moving forward? If this is the route that you choose to go. Um, and that way, and I think you do that, honestly, if they decide to play it, um, you do that before your parent meeting. So that way they don't come to your parent meeting like, Oh, well, why didn't sign up for all this? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So I think you just have that conversation beforehand. Um, and to know that you're there for their daughter, um, or son, and you want what's best for them, and you're really excited about this opportunity. But I think communication is a huge deal. Um, it's probably the first step that you need to do to that player if they show interest. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think 
um, you, you know, hopefully you'll get those kids. And that, you know, but not only are they going to come back, or they want to come back, but then you got all these other players are like, well, you know, we we decided to play high school soccer. So mm -hmm. how do you fit them in, right? Because you well, know that a lot of the team dynamics happen off the field, right? You know, as far as how do they get along with each other and right. all that. So how do you fit them in with the team? Well, I think as coaches, um, as high school coaches, we all want to win, right? It's we're that competitive side. Everyone wants to win a state championship, but mm -hmm. we want to win. But I think also as high school coaches, um, I think sometimes we're maybe undervalued and what we really want to accomplish. I know with my kids, as much as I'd like to win, I know at the end of the day, whenever they graduate, I want to make sure that that child, that girl, she is grown up. She's a kind, caring person. She has learned and developed and she's going to be successful in college, whether she's playing or not. Um, and that there's a much broader picture than just soccer. So and what you're talking about is um, some of the girls that are coming back, they really didn't have a choice. Right. Um, how many of you I know I'm in a program right now where um, we have a manager that could play. But yeah. she can't play, um, but she still wants to be a part of the program. So she's, you know, filling up yeah. water bottles. She's airing up balls. She's doing whatever she can to be a part of that program. Um, and But it's not her fault or her choice that she right. couldn't do it. Um, so I also think as coaches, we're not there. I think we also need to help guide that DA, that player that wants to come back. We can't just say, hey, go at it, turn them loose. I think right. you pull them in and you help guide them and help navigate those waters um, in order for them to be successful in the program, in order to integrate them with the rest of the team. Um, are there going to be challenges? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, you're talking about, but I will say this, um, it, it kind of depends on the program that you're at. But right. Right. Um, a DA player coming back and some one of our, um, we have a lot of successful programs um, in our state that consistent, consistently win. So whether or not they get a DA player, that would be great, but it may not make a huge difference because I also feel that we have some programs where kids are good enough to play in the DA, but they chose to play high school. Right, right. Yeah. And so Howie, who, if I'm guessing, he's the chair of our high school uh, committee and uh, he's a, so he's a big time, big timer. Um, bigger question, but related. Uh, what would you do about a non DA player that spent two years in your program? and may never play soccer after high school, but she's on the bubble to get pushed out or cut due to two, eight, two DA players coming back. Right. So uh, um, that's a, by the way, that's a zinger. I mean, that's a, yeah, you so. know, <laughs> that's, that, that's a thank you very little Howie. That's what that is. That's a thank you very little. Well, here you go. Um, I think everyone has players in their program that they've kept because they're such good kids, yeah. right? Um, and I think a lot of it with coaching is having that honest conversation with in player meetings before and after season and throughout the season of, hey, this is where I see you. This is what I see your role is as this year. Um, you may not, you have to recognize, hey, you may not ever step on the field as a high school player. Are you willing to still stay on this team and have a great attitude and work hard and if you are, then you've been on here for two years. We're going to keep you, right? Um, if this is a problem, then maybe this isn't the best place, for, you know, the right place for you to be. Um, but also, unfortunately, you and you hate to say this, and I was talking about this conversation with um, one of my coaching buddies. Um, we have because we talk soccer a whole lot, obviously. Um, here is you. It's kind of part of life, right? And he actually compared it to chess. I'm talking about Austin Guest from Middle Earth, and he was talking about at the end of the day, you have players, um, but we're talking about chess, a pawn's a pawn. Not every pawn can be a queen. And everyone has their role and their responsibility and their limitations. And as a coach, you have to put your best 11 players on the field to be successful. Right. Sure. Um, and so are there going to be some probably some really tough, hard conversations of yeah. maybe a kid that, hey, you know what, maybe she's just going to be a senior and the senior that played above her, she graduated, so she finally gets that chance to play, you know, yeah. and then it's going to be hard. But once again, that's kind of part of life, right? Um, yeah, yeah it, it's a tough situation because yeah. you can't really punish the the young lady that, you know, is pursuing her dreams, right, to play the, at, at a DA, you know, and but yet you can't uh, for the for the young lady that's kind of not been playing the DA, been playing for your high school team. 
you know, there's points of loyalty there. So it's a tough situation. And it's a, it's a great question, Howie asked, by the way. I was just giving I think everything you do is just be honest, right? I think you, it's that conversation. It's building that rapport with your athletes. And hopefully as a high school coach, you've already invested um, in that child. And you can have those conversations uh, moving forward. Yeah, um, yeah. Kevin brought up a good point here. He just says each year presents a new um, new situation in which players have to cope. Right. Mm -hmm. So last year's status brings no guarantees. And I, right. Yeah. That, that's absolutely true. So. I mean, we, every time, I mean, at the beginning of the season, I've got, I'm very fortunate to coach um, a lot of incredibly like great players, but every year and every day they step on the field, they're still competing. Oh, and absolutely. Gotta compete. And at the end of the day, like I said, you, you have to put your best 11 on the field. So, yeah. yeah. Coach Parker. So, Corey, a uh, couple of insights for you. We have a pretty large audience, so don't get intimidated. <laughs> um, almost half of the audience that responded to the poll believe that Texas is a country and don't believe that it's a state. <laughs> I'm figuring that that comes from your husband and a number of other people. Um, uh, but you've got people from Maryland joining us and a bunch from Texas. Uh, I won't um, lie. I kind of made this a competition. Um, yeah, Gisette is here from KS KISD. She, uh, she's uh, Gisette's big fan. Uh, yeah. Darush from Austin, Texas. Bill from Dallas. Uh, Heath, he says. So uh, Michigan. So we, we did well with an audience. Um, quick question. So one of my favorite organizations, and this is sincere, is TASCO, mm -hmm. the, the Texas yeah. uh, high school coaches, soccer coaches. During the, the time that you're going through, the, the time we're all going through, plus the DA, have you guys in TASCO, has TASCO either given you guidance or has TASCO done any uh, in, uh, informational meetings? Has your parent organization of high school soccer coaches sort of tried to rally you guys together? Um, yeah, we have. Um, as far as TASCO, um, what we've kind of been doing, um, like every Saturday, we state of Texas is broken up into different regions. So we've kind of been doing a lot of our uh, regional leaders through TASCO have been getting together once a week and discussing ways of, to keep their kids involved, um, to keep their skills up, fitness, also brainstorming ideas about, hey, what are you doing in your program um, to motivate your kids? What does your preseason look like? Uh, so our regional leaders for TASCO are we have the option for doing Zoom meetings about once a week to get together and just kind of talk about moving forward and what uh, summer's going to look like, what your preseason's going to look like now. Um, and so they have been doing that. They've been great. Um, you know, Tasco is a fantastic organization. Uh, it's, I don't know if you guys have ever been down to the actual uh, Tasco convention. <laughs> You're smiling, so I'm assuming, yes, we have. Yeah, uh, a few times. Yeah. A few times. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's, and also what you love about Tasco is it's actually except it's perfect for every coach with a lot of experience and for the coaches that are just starting out. And I think it covers uh, every experience. So, yeah. Um, so Tasco has been great as far as all this goes. And I think our regional directors have been great uh, with trying to keep all the coaches involved and everyone um, still trying to stay. Um, and we're also asking advice on, Hey, what is your district doing as far as awards go? How is your district doing equipment? And so we're sharing advice through that as well. You, you may not have been Mrs. Oglesby the first time that Rusty got me to come down and do oh. the Tasco show and, and Vince, I know, and, and Tony, the late Tony DeChico. Um, I, I will give a shout out for Tasco because one of the reasons I love what you guys do so much is the idea that um, to coach high school soccer in the state of Texas, you've got to be a teacher, right? Yes. Yes, you Which do. Which I, I, from my perspective, when we're, when we're sitting here um, celebrating high school soccer, as most of the audience is, the added notion that you're all educators and you're committed to your communities because you live in them and you raise your own families there mm -hmm. is really, really nice. The last state um, that I coached in, I coached college in it, but the high school coaches very often were club coaches and the parents were paying their, their wages and it created an element of mercenary um, that club was their primary focus and high school was something they just did because the kids, they, their, their club athletes were playing high school. So I, I total shout out to the way Texas does it and Tasco because you guys have a fantastic organization. You know, well, thank you so much. And it's thoughts like that why people vote that Texas should be as a country instead of a state. Yeah, I'll <laughs> yeah. see what the poll numbers say. Oh, you're yeah. dropping, you're dropping down to thirty eight percent. I think that's because we've got we've got a good number of Texas people that I'm sure voted for it's a nation, right. but 
the rest of the country's tuning in and resisting. They're probably just saying, hey, Texas' is ego, their ego is big enough. They don't need to oh. think their own country. Rusty's ego is big enough for, an, oh. for a state alone. Ouch. Yeah. Um, I got to so, deal with it every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Corey, first off, we take, we've gone over time and we've taken, you know, we've gone over the, the, the a lot of time. Um, so I don't want to keep you, but just, so just to wrap up, um, a message to high school coaches just in general, right? So what's the meaning for you to you about being a high school coach? Like what is, I'm sorry. What, what do you value the most being a high school coach? What, what's it mean to you being a high school coach? I love the idea of investing in kids. Um, sometimes as all coaches, we may have had to start out at different programs and we work our way up to a better program. But I've been at schools where, you know what, not only am I a coach, but I've had to be sort of honestly as a parent, or maybe I've had to be like a brother or sister, or maybe a counselor, or maybe a friend at that point. Um, I think we wear all different levels of hats, um, kind of depending on where we are. And right. so, in, in so many of our high school kids, they may not go play college soccer, but there's a whole other life outside of that. Um, and I think it's having the ability to invest in kids yeah. and knowing like whenever they leave you and leave your program that they feel better about themselves. They're a kind, they're a genuine person. Um, they care about people and that hopefully you give them enough tools and confidence to be successful with whatever avenue they decide to pursue. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I loved. You know, I, I coached high school for 17 years and I just loved every day you got a chance to connect with them you know, every single day. And you know this, I mean, it's true for club coaches too, but you might be the best thing going for them, right? I mean, you might be the best thing happening for them in their world today. Yeah. I think you know, high school coaches have to be, have to maybe provide a different experience environment yeah. than what yeah. their club coaches do. Absolutely. And, and because, I mean, a lot of the times we maybe see some of our kids as teachers and coaches more than what their parents do. Because they're with yep. us eight hours a day, and then if they're playing soccer, they're with us an additional hour and a half, two hours a day. So they, <laughs> we may have more conversation with them than maybe their own parents. And yep, get a I know. That's, 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 that's um, true. Yep. And so I think high school coaches um, are have a very good opportunity and can be very powerful in the development and the guidance of students. And I think that's a pretty awesome Feeling to have. Well, especially in Texas, where you know the teachers are also coaches too. Right? I mean, coaches are also teachers too, right? So then, yeah. to me, that's it's just a uh, it's a great uh, situation. So, mm -hmm. uh, Coach Parker, any final questions for for Mrs. Oglesby? Um, <laughs> Corey, was your maiden name Copeland? Yes, sir. It was because a number of people on the chat don't want to refer to you as an Oglesby. They it's they'd not. rather see Russ or a hyphen or something like that. Um, yes. You know, what I what it occurred to me when you were responding about what high school soccer means to you, I think the majority of clubs in America and Vince and I have worked with them and, and work, continue to work with them, do fantastic jobs in their communities, oh, yeah. be they high competitive. One of the nice things about high school, though, is the kids are almost they're, they're absolutely guaranteed to be representing something greater than just the team. They represent the school and they represent the fans and maybe there's a JV team. And that isn't always the case in club, right? Sometimes in club, it's just the team and it's, they're not representing anything more than just the team. Um, so I like the added responsibility that comes with being a high school player that sometimes, and, and the level of, of competition might be a little bit less uh, technically, and um, it may not have all the, the bells and whistles of really good club soccer. But high school soccer has some unique features that you cannot replicate in, or it's almost impossible to replicate in the club environment, which is why I think in an ideal world, I would continue even believing in, in development of elite athletes. I think there's something in the high school environment that is above the X's and O's and, I, and what you guys speak to in Tasco speaks to that. So, yeah. Well, we had a few late questions come in. Um, okay. Ian, our friend from Bainbridge Island, uh, you know, I mean, he's he's coming from Seattle, so he probably logged on late. But um, uh, his question is, and I think Rusty talked about it too a couple weeks ago. Do club coaches connect in high with high school coaches in Texas, or do they show no interest whatsoever? Um, yes, I think it's a great question. 
I'll say, I'm going to say yes and no. You do have your club coaches that actually come out and um, they take an interest in where they're, um, to wherever their players playing in high school. They'll come in out and watch the high school games. Um, I yeah. can't say that we have a huge following of club coaches that do that, but there are some that do it. Now, yeah. I, with the fallout of the collapse of the DA, I think this is a great opportunity to actually close the gap between club coaches and high school coaches. Um, this is a great opportunity for high school coaches to reach out to that club coach and introduce yourself and say, hey, this is what I believe. This is my thought. Um, we share the same player. I just want to, you know, introduce myself. And, but, you know, I'm really excited. And here's our schedule. And I'd love for you to come out. And I just think it's a great opportunity right now for us to close that gap between club coaches and high yeah. school. Yeah, everyone wins when we work together. I mean, it just, you know, it, it's silly. So there, there's been some really, really good late questions come in. Um, and, and Todd made an interesting observation, and, and I can empathize because in Indiana, where I, I live and I was a high school coach, we can only work with so many players out of season. Now they've sent, since got rid of that rule. Um, but I know in, in Indiana, you couldn't have what more than six kids or five kids from the same high school on a club team. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yeah. So right. it made it really, when I was a club DOC, when I was also a high school coach, it made it really challenging for the clubs because, you know, you got seven kids from the same high school, but they're the same age group for club, but you have to split them, right? Oh, because wow. you only have more than five or six. And so every state's unique is my point. And, mm -hmm. you know, so the, we've talked to you and, and Rusty, I think well, next week we're going to have uh, Greg Winkler on and maybe Howie as well um, from different states. So but just to give it a, a different perspective, but this, I think the focus of this webinar was more the DA, right? And how do we start acclimating these players? And, mm -hmm. and you shared some wonderful ideas uh, with mm -hmm. that. So thank you. Thank you for yeah. your time. And, uh, um, well, with that, with that, we have gone way over time, but <laughs> that's okay. My wife is like, you know, doing this to me because we got the spot. We have to go to Walmart, you know, and do the um, right. parking spot. We have to get there. Okay. Taken. I'm, I'm kidding, but, uh, we're okay. But thank you all so much. Uh, yeah. Corey, thank you so much for being on and Rusty. Thank you for, you know, being there, I guess, helping her. He's going to get on. You know he wants to get on. Let him on. I know. Rusty, he him he wants to get on. I think he's letting me have my moment. Okay. There you <laughs> go. But thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm really excited that you guys are doing these webinars. I think it's a, um, great for coaches and thank opportunity you. for everyone to get on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Tomorrow, by the way, we're having a guy named Russell Earnshaw, known as Rusty. Um, he's going to talk about gamification, and uh, it. He, I just talked to him this morning. He just got done with the Arsenal kids, right? So, this guy's big time. So tomorrow, when you come on at noon Eastern time, Russell Earnshaw is going to talk about gamification and how to use it in soccer. It's fantastic ideas. So, anyway, thank you all very much. Good night, and Corey, thank you so much. Thank you, Corey. Great thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you.